The 250th episode of AEW Dynamite is now over, and let's review it. So, the first hour and a bit of the show was made up of one, well, almost dropped this, one single match, and that was MJF taking on Will Ospreay for the AEW International Championship. And this is a match that has divided a lot of opinion, and here's, here's my opinion on it. Some of the in-ring psychology did not make sense. That's the first thing I have to say. The match itself, solid. I enjoyed it. Like I said, some of the in-ring psychology didn't quite make sense, but they made up for it in their work rates and in the story they told. People complaining about the length of the match, go watch WWE Speed. That's three minutes on, t on uh, X on Twitter. Go watch that. Three minutes of your life, that's it. Has TikTok, I said this on, on Twitter, on X, and it's gained some traction. Has TikTok really ruined your attention spans so bad to the point that you can't watch an hour long match? And I know an hour long match should not be every night. We should not be seeing this all the time. I know Ric Flair did it back in the day. That was my argument. Flair did it more often than not. They went Broadway. That's what they used to call it. Um, and people ate it up. But now... Our brains are so wired that we can't even watch an hour-long match. But anyway, I don't want that every night. But it, we don't get it every night either. This is like the first time we've seen it in 2024 on TV. And I think before that, last time we saw it, was, it must have been Danielson and Hangman. So this is not like something you get every single week. So I, I think it's an awesome change. I think it's something different. I think it's something new. I think it... it Tells us that this can happen at any moment. You know, it's unpredictable. It's a championship match. I enjoyed it. And what I liked also is I thought, okay, this is going to a time limit draw. It's simple. I could, You could see at some point this was going to a time limit draw. But they didn't do that. They swerved us right at the end. And MJF is your new AEW international champion. And I was, I was shocked by that. Shocked by that. He did it in the last two seconds. He came up clutch. He, yeah, the surprising they threw me off there so that's why i say things made up for the lack of entering psychology and what do i mean by lack of entering psychology i mean they went out of the ring for like five minutes plus and i think they broke up the count once after like four minutes and you think to yourself why are you breaking the the ref's count why the ref wasn't counting at the beginning who knows then of course the table spot why using a table in a normal match that's another thing um why did you have to do the thing with uh, Osprey's arm where the doctor had to pull it into place? I get you selling his, his shoulder, but if, if his shoulder was really that banged up, he wouldn't have been able to pick him up for the Tiger Driver like he did and hold him there for that long while he's contemplating whether or not he's going to do it or not. Um, that didn't make sense. There's just a couple things that didn't make sense, and that's going to happen with an hour-long match, I think, unless you someone like Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, or for that matter... Brian Danielson and Hangman Adam Page. But for me, it's still a very good match nonetheless. A classic, a classic TV match. Perhaps those things bring it down slightly, but still great nonetheless. And they told a story. That was the important part here. They told a story. And they clearly did this hour-long match to maybe try and get a rematch at, um, at All In. But how did they do that now that MJF actually won? I suppose he cheated. I mean, he did use the ring right at the end. But, um, yeah, just to go through match quick, some of my notes. MJF was setting himself as the heel from the onset, you know. Doing his classic heel stuff with the crowd. Doing his classic, the Fargo strut, the, the hips swaying around. I'm not going to do that for you guys. But um, those types of things were classic heel MJF stuff. Um, there's a little moments where they're in the crowd fighting and Osprey holds MJF down and a little girl comes and punches MJF on the stomach. That was kind of cool for the little girl, of course. Um, one of those moments that she'll probably never forget. Then, of course, we had a Styles Clash off the apron, a Styles Clash off the second rope. We had a crossroads. That was the one thing. I didn't like the overuse of everyone else's finisher. I like I like it as, as, as a one-off in a main Osprey match, like a pay-per-view level Osprey match when he does one Styles Clash. I like that cool you're paying homage to people that um you were brought up on and people that inspired you into this business cool i mean but to do all of these moves yeah a little bit little bit too much a little bit too much um the of course we had the elbow drop of the top rope to the table on the outside that was that was a pretty nasty bump 
And then at the end, we had Osprey's downfall where he refused to use the Tiger Driver 91, which I already alluded to earlier. Um, and that then allowed for the ref bump moments later. And then um, MGF to use the diamond ring, take out Will Osprey, get the win. One, two, three, with two seconds remaining. The other thing I didn't like is we didn't see MGF put on the ring. Like we could assume because we know MGF. The casual fan is going to think, this guy is using Mike Tyson with that punch. You get what I'm trying to say? After a full hour, they're going to think, this guy just Mike tyson him after a full hour of wrestling. That's obviously not the case. He had a diamond ring on his on his finger. But they only showed that a little bit afterwards, and I felt maybe that would have taken out the illusion for fans that aren't aware of, of, of MJF's ongoings. So, that is that match. That match took up a large large portion of the show as we already said and then we had a little a couple backstage segments and in-ring promos and stuff so we had the briscoes and the acclaimed come in um or they had a backstage segment where the acclaimed was asking the briscoes sorry mark briscoe um where they came in and they said listen we want to be a part of this blood and guts match mark briscoe is like yes i'll i'll have you in but it's not just up to me so in comes swerve and Swerve says we've had our battles back and forth, so I give you the seal of approval. So there we have it. The acclaimed Mark Briscoe, Swerve Strickland, all in blood and guts, and we'll find out our fifth member later on. We then had TV time with The Learning Tree, Chris Jericho. I did not pay attention to this one bit until Suzuki came out. He, I think he headbutts Jericho, but like nobody else then did anything to Suzuki. They let him just walk off. The guy's like 50. He's not that scary, man. Big Bill, you three times the size of him. Like, next, please. I'm, I'm not interested in this Chris Jericho stuff. We then had the Elite promo. So they had a promo backstage. They didn't really say much, though, um, until we saw Mercedes come in. They asked Mercedes to do her dance. A little bit weird. A little bit weird. Don't know if that's how EVPs should be talking to their, their employees, but anyway. Um, and then Okada basically simped for Mercedes Monet and lost 20 aura points with that one. That was just embarrassing. <laughs> but uh, what have they done to Okada, man? That's that's for another video. That's that's really for another video. We then had Mercedes Monet into the ring taking on Nyla Rose. This was an open challenge that wasn't really an open challenge because they announced the open challenge before the open challenge. Um, but yeah, light work for Mercedes Monet, fairly average match, nothing nothing to write home about, honestly, nothing really to talk about. In the end of the match, we saw a person in a sting mask, um, it was Brooke Breaker, um, she comes out, she jumps the barricade, she chases Mercedes Monet, but um, yeah, that, that, that all breaks down then, and I'm excited for this match as long as Brooke Baker wins, because I don't want to be doing all this, come to all in, and Brooke Baker doesn't get the win. That's just not gonna. That's just not gonna fly. That's just not gonna be good stuff. So I'm hoping Britt Baker gets the win in the end. Um, we then moved on to uh, Mariah May's segment. Now, last week Mariah May may have had one of the best heel turns on AW on AW Dynamite ever. Okay, but this week she came out impersonating Tony Storm, which I understand. She is the understudy to Tony Storm. That is the gimmick. She is the understudy. So she came out as Tony Storm because Tony Storm's not available now. But I just didn't hit, man. I needed some some violence. I needed some aggression. I needed some something that we got last week. You know, a little bit of that 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 element of aggression that we got last week. You know, it's an impersonation of Tony Storm. You know, I want her to come out of her shell now and do her own thing. I want that to be the point of all this. I'm not your understudy. I'm better than you. That's what I wanted. Not quite what we got. And I know a lot of people enjoyed this and thought it was good. But I'm, I just think for the bigger picture, I was hoping Mariah May would be Mariah May. Then we had the main event, which was Swerve Strickland and Kazucha Okada. And we started this match with, what, eight minutes left of the show of normal time before the overrun. And, um, yeah, man, it was a decent match. They were doing their thing slow at some points, fast-paced at other points. Typical Okada stuff. Um, but... In comes the DQ as the Young Bucks take out Swerve Strickland. As it looks like he potentially could be getting the win. But no, they take him out. DQ, it all breaks down. The Acclaimed come out to make the save. Mark Briscoe comes out to make the save as everyone's taking on Swerve. and then But it's still a 4-on-5 four on, four on attack. Because Hangman also comes out. 
Um, and then what happens to that? Who evens the odds? Darby Allen comes out to even the odds as he comes from the rafters like Sting. And um, yeah, that then he evens odds and it's just an all-out brawl. Um, getting ready for Blood and Guts next week. This is probably the most underwhelming Blood and Guts match that we've had to date. There hasn't been a long-term story for it. They've just been slotting people in recently, which is quite... It's different to other years, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, I'm still looking forward to it nonetheless. And that was our episode of AEW Dynamite. Up and down, perhaps not a fantastic episode as a whole, but we got a fantastic match in the beginning. I gave my criticisms, but I also gave my applauds for that match. And everything else was kind of just average and, pro and, f and further enhancing other stories that was pretty much it at this match this episode was about mjf and osprey unfortunately whether you like it or not that was what it was so with that being said we'll see you guys next time take care and peace